Fan Mouth Fantasy Roundtable. Mouthing off at the roundtable today is myself, Aaron Lee, Mr. Fantasy himself, Dave Del Grande, and the high stakes hustler, Jeff Collins. We're here today to give you our advice so you can pick your way to fantasy jackpot this weekend. First up, we're going to talk about how we built our lineups. Dave, how'd you construct your lineup this week? Well, two players I really love this season are Justin Blackman and Josh Gordon, two uh, wide receivers who started the season on the suspended list, and thus they've come into this fantasy game very underpriced. Their production from game one has been great. Uh, their values are starting to catch up to their production a little bit, but still it hasn't caught up. I wanted these two guys in my lineup this week, especially when I saw their matchups. Great matchups for the both of them. Uh, and I built my lineup around that. I was able to get one superstar running back in there with them, some solid mid salaried players. Uh, I'm very happy with my lineup. Well, it sounds like he's Putting his money on his wide receivers. What was your plan this week? I took a more balanced approach. I pretty much have balanced throughout the whole lineup. No real weaknesses, in my opinion. We'll see what Dave thinks. But uh, oh. it's, it's balanced all the way through. Yeah, I went uh, with a cheap quarterback and then powered all the way through until the very end and really went with some sleepers I don't know if everybody's going to agree with. But we'll see how it goes. Who'd you start out with at quarterback this week, Dave? Well, apparently I started out with a cheap quarterback. You just referenced him. I got the same quarterback as you. I got Nick Foles this week of the Eagles playing the Cowboys. What I like about Foles is he stepped right into a good situation, and the Eagles didn't miss a beat. Uh, he played last week against Tampa Bay, threw three touchdown passes, ran in for a fourth score uh, against a decent Tampa Bay team. The Dallas defense is not as good as Tampa Bay. Uh, and I love the way he spread the ball around. He found all of his wideouts, his tight end, pretty much equally. The one thing he didn't do was throw the ball to McCoy. And if he gets McCoy going this week, he could have a really big game. So at a very low price, I really like Foles this week. Yeah, I think the way to beat the Cowboys this week, though, is to run the ball. I looked at RG3 last week, and he threw the ball 39 times at 77 yards rushing and put up 13.54 fantasy points. So I don't think Nick Foles is better than RG3. So I, I'm a little skeptical about the pick. The matchup's pretty good, but uh, you saw what RG3 did. Oh, well, do you, who do you have instead? I've got Andrew Luck, and I already decided this before I even saw the salaries. I was going through the games looking, and I didn't see many matchups they liked as far as the quarterbacks go. But Andrew Luck stood out to me because he's at home this week. He plays a lot better at home, even dating back to last year. Last year's touchdown interception ratio at home was 12 to 5. On the road, it was 11 to 13. This year, fantasy wise, he gets at least 20 points per game at home. And he's going against the Denver Broncos. Peyton's coming into town. It's going to be a high scoring game. Andrew Luck wants to su succeed in this game just as much as Peyton Manning does. So it, it should be a shootout. Well, I agree with two things you've said there. Number one is that I think it's a very tough week to pick quarterbacks. There's a lot of bad matchups out there. And secondly, your critique of my quarterback, I would use the same one on you in that I think the only way Indianapolis is going to compete with Denver is by running the ball. They can't get into a shootout. They don't have their receiving core is half of what Denver's is. Their quarterback is half of what Denver has. But yet they have a running back. They've got a strong running game. They've got to stress ball control in this game. I think it's their only chance to compete. And so that's, I like luck, but I, uh, I'd be afraid that that's the kind of game that Indianapolis is going to try to play, whether they're successful or not. I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. No one's really tried to run the ball in Denver that much this year. So it, it's untested, but uh, no one really has that much success the few times that they do run so yeah I like luck like you said I went with Foles too I think the biggest thing for me was that he didn't throw an interception and I think coming out the first time and not making a mistake is huge and I don't want my quarterback to be throwing interceptions so it's a great matchup at home I think it's a great play and it leaves you plenty of money to have fun with later in your lineup so um who'd you pick at wide receiver this week Wide receiver, uh, I'll go down to, we've got Victor Cruz and T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton, I'll pair with Luck uh, for the same reasons that I gave you with Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck has a lot of success there. And then with Victor Cruz, he's been up and down this year. Uh, I'll give you guys that if you want to argue that that's not a good pick. But uh, he's playing against a defense that gives up the seventh most points to wide receivers, and he's the best wide receiver on the team. Uh, well, I, I love you both have Cruz in your lineup, and I think that's a great pick. I'm surprised that uh, you're able to, to fit him in at that big salary, but it's a very good choice. My problem here is the same one I had with your lineup last week is 
to me, if I'm going to pair a quarterback with a wide receiver, they have to be elite. And I think in this case here, I already talked about Luck. I think he's a very average quarterback. I think Hilton is a less than average wide receiver. I wouldn't necessarily want either one of those in my lineup. To pair them together, I think you're really rolling the dice. Yeah, I mean, with T.Y., though, he's a boomer bust guy, no he doubt. Is. But his, his bust is 10 points. You know, his boom is 30 points. So uh, I, even with the downside, with how cheap he is, I'll take the 10 points. Give them to me. Who are your wide receivers this week, Dave? Well, I mentioned that I uh, have Blackman and Gordon going this week, two guys who, uh, I, as I said, I think their production still outweighs their their salaries, um, which makes them great. I mean, Blackman, you cannot have a better two weeks than he's had so far. He had a monster game last week. Love his matchup this week against San Diego. Uh, Gordon, love his matchup this week against Green Bay. Um, my um, flex, I'm also using a third wide receiver. I'm using Keenan Allen. He came through for me Monday night uh, in a game against a pretty decent defense. I asked myself afterward, why am I playing him against Indianapolis? This is a pretty good defense. He had a great game. Uh, far less hesitation this week. They're playing at Jacksonville. Uh, the way he's rolling, I think he's going to have a great game too. So I, I, I like all three of those guys. Yeah, uh, my knock is on Justin Blackman. I, I love Justin Blackman. I love Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon, I can fully support that pick. But with Justin Blackman, this is going to be the highest price uh, that he's had the whole year, and it's going to be his highest price for the rest of the year, too. I don't think he'll ever reach the sixth highest price wide receiver again this year. So you're doing that, and you're probably going to get the lowest production of the year so far. He's had two really huge games, so I, I'm not going to pay that much money to get what's going to be his, probably his third best game of the year so far. I don't know. I disagree with that. I also think Blackman's a great pick, especially um, with the Cecil Shorts injury. I think that opens up Plenty more targets for Blackman. My two picks this week, well, three, one of which was Victor Cruz, as we already talked about, and the other two are um, Kenbrell Tompkins, who's my flex pick, and Jordy Nelson. Jordy, because um, the other two top receivers are injured, and if Aaron Rodgers is throwing the ball, I think it means Jordy Nelson's probably going to get a lot more looks. And Kenbrell Tompkins, because he got on Tom Brady's good side last week, catching that last-minute touchdown. So if Amendola is as injured as he looks, then I think Kenbrell will get some more balls next week. I like both those picks. I mean, it's a, a similar thinking to both of them is that they both have injuries at the receiver core. They both have great quarterbacks. You know they're going to throw the ball, and there are fewer options to throw it to. So, you know, I don't know. You can't go wrong with either of those guys, I don't think. No one's concerned about Joe Hayden covering Jordy Nelson? I mean, that, that would scare me. I, I'm not going to put probably hardly anyone that Joe Hayden covers in my lineup. Him and Tlaib from New England scare me. So... I'm not touching any receivers that are going up against those guys. I got an idea. Maybe Green Bay should run the ball more this week. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, that, it, absolutely. I okay. mean, at least you got the ball 23 times the last two weeks. I can't really run it more, but yeah. Speaking of running the ball, you sound like you're all in for Lacey over there. Uh, yes. Uh, my two running backs I mentioned before, I went after a superstar running back. I think they're two running backs stand out in their matchups this week, of the two highest priced guys. I, I think Jamal Charles has a great matchup this week, and I think Adrian Peterson has a great matchup this week. I could only fit one into my salary. I went with Peterson. Uh, Peterson was basically having a good season. Maybe not great, but good season until last week where he faced by far the best defense he's faced so far. He's back down to a subpar defense this week going at the New York Giants. I expect a monster game from him. Um, but I'm here to talk about Lacey. I mean, Lacey. Green Bay has a running game, uh, and what a perfect time for it because they've got Cobb out with an injury, Jones, who may or may not play because of an injury. they got a great matchup on the third receiver. Green Bay's got to run the ball this week. Cleveland is not a good team against the run. I think Green Bay, um, more maybe than we've seen them run the ball for several years, I think they're going to run the ball this week. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about Lacey. Uh, I'll just say a couple things. I like Lacey. I think he's good. Uh, Fantasy-wise, though, this year, he's had 23 carries the last couple games, as I talked about. He hasn't reached more than 14 points, though. So that's the concern. Is He's getting a, a lot of volume, but it's not equating into that many fancy points. I mean, I, I don't know. Would you be happy with 14 points, or is, is that about what you're expecting? Well, I, if Blackman and Gordon score to their <laughs> average, then, yeah, I'll take 14 yeah. points out of Lacey. But I, to be honest with you, I expect more than that because I think 
uh, what he proved last week is that this is Alabama all over again. They're going to keep handing the ball to him. And 23 times last week they handed it to him out of 30 carries for the team. And uh, Rodgers had five of the other seven. So this is a one-man attack. They're yeah. using him in the middle of the field. They use him at the goal line. Eventually he's going to find his way into the end zone. I wish he'd get receptions, though, because in a PPR league, you know, that can just really add up. If he added five receptions in there, then you're up to like 18, 19, 20 points, you know. But, I mean, it's... That's nitpicking. Well, then we change his name to Jamal Charles. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, speaking of Jamal Charles, we'll get to that. Who are your running backs this week, Jeff? Running backs, I've got three because I took one of my flex. LaShawn McCoy's. uh, LaShawn McCoy, the Eagles, is going against Dallas. Danny Woodhead of the Chargers going against Jacksonville. And C.J. Spiller of the Bills going against Miami. I mentioned the teams they're playing because they're extremely soft matchups. Spiller is the one, I'd say, lottery ticket of these guys. A guy that... I kind of taken a chance on hoping that he does something. But what I like about him is he doesn't need a lot of carries to put up a bunch of points. You saw that last year. Even if he gets 10 to 15 touches, he can go off for 20, 30 points. Uh, but Woodhead and McCoy are solid. You know what you're getting with them. You can trust them, and I feel very comfortable with them in my lineup. Well, what I love about your lineup this week is you've obviously stolen my philosophy of playing mediocre players in great matchups because certainly Woodhead and Spiller qualify this week as guys who, I mean, especially Spiller, who's kind of been injured, hasn't been himself, uh, has what appears to be a good matchup. I'd argue against that. I think Miami coming off a bye is going to be a much better defensive team this week than they have been. Um, what I don't like like about Woodhead, and you've completely sold me on Woodhead, mind you, yeah. is that at Jacksonville, you wonder, I mean, like the Monday night game, this is a game they should win, they should be ahead most of the game, why are they going to have their pass catching running back in there when they can hand the ball to Matthews 20 to 25 times? I think his playing time is going to be lower than maybe any other game this year, and of course when they throw the ball, they're going to be throwing to Allen. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Uh yeah. With Woodhead, though, all you need is five catches. I, I mentioned before, five catches, 50 yards, 10 points, and that's pretty much the bottom for him, you know? Even with Matthews getting the 20 carries last uh, last week, you see Woodhead putting up 12, 13 points. But remember, you don't have my wide receivers going, so you're going to take 10 points from that running back position? I'll take 10 as the floor, okay. yeah, with a lot of upside. Uh, and with C.J. Spiller, too, he's going up against Miami, and Miami gives up the second most points to opposing running backs, so... I feel good against that defense. Well, I agree with Woodhead, and after what he did last night against the Colts, that's part of the reason why I'm going with no Sean Moreno again this week, because I think he's going to have a huge game against the Colts this week. And my other pick, as we talked about before, is Jamal Charles. Houston has allowed opposing running backs to run all over them. Frank Orr had um, plenty of yards, touchdown. Zach Stacy, a rookie, did it 82 yards last week. I just think it's a, a great matchup. I think we need to double check those salary figures because I don't know how you fit both of those guys onto your team. I think they're two very good choices. Jamal Charles is one of my favorite guys in fantasy right now because he's Mr. Consistent. He hasn't had a game this year with less than 19 points. I mean, getting him in your lineup is always a good move. Yeah, can't can't pass up consistency in fantasy football. Um, who's your tight end this week? Tight end went with Jordan Cameron. I have him as my number one tight end personally, and he's Price down at the seventh. So uh, I love the value there. He's playing against Green Bay, who's uh, the 29th ranked defense against tight ends. So he's, he's got a great matchup. And he's had a couple matchups the last couple weeks that have impacted his point production. And I think it's being blamed on Brian we- uh, Brandon Whedon. But in reality, it's just been tough matchups. So people are starting to forget about him a little bit. Oh, I love the pick. I think that between Gordon and Cameron, I think Cleveland's going to be throwing the ball a lot against Green Bay. I expect them both to have a good game. I think there are a lot of good matchups at tight end. Pretty much all the high price guys I thought were justified. Yeah. I didn't have that kind of money to spend on my tight end this week. Uh, so I went with Heath Miller of Pittsburgh. Uh, he's someone who started the season injured. Uh, he's come on strong. He has, he's coming off his best game. This week they're up against Baltimore, which has been surprisingly bad against tight ends this year. And we know Pittsburgh is a team that's thrown the ball a ton more than usual this season. So that to me, that adds up to a pretty good week for an undervalued tight end. Absolutely. Uh, Julius Thomas comes to mind when you're thinking about Baltimore and giving up a bunch of points to tight ends. Um, But Heath Miller has proven that he's Ben Roethlisberger's favorite target. Antonio Brown might get more yards a lot of times, but when it comes down to needing a first down or needing a big play, it's Heath Miller that Ben trusts. Yeah, it's hard to argue with that matchup, either of your matchups, really. I think um, Jordan Cameron is he has chemistry with Whedon. He proved it earlier in the season. I think people forgot that. So if they look at his early games with Whedon, 
I think they might change their tune a little bit. My pick this week is arguably a, a pretty deep sleeper, and that's Scott Chandler. Uh, I like the chemistry I saw with him with Thad last weekend, and Miami's been actually pretty poor against tight ends this season, giving up a touchdown to every tight end they faced except for one. So I'm kind of taking a flyer here, but I feel good about it. I'm sorry, did you say Scott Chandler? <laughs> Heard of him? Who, um, <laughs> Jeff? <laughs> well, here, I'll give her a little support here. The Dolphins give up the third most points to tight ends, so it's a really good matchup. As we talked about, there's a lot of good matchups this week. Chandler isn't the best tight end, but if you're gonna take a chance on a guy, look at look at her running backs. She's you know, yeah. She's if if the top half of my lineup she does have, what I, I expect it to, uh, I won't agree. have to worry. She can have all the best players. She's got to take a chance somewhere, so it's it's a good pick. All right. Well, who who do you have a defense this week, Dave? <laughs> well. <laughs> The, the, apparently the worst defense in the league because both of you have gone against them. Uh, Miami was supposed to be a good defensive team this year. Uh, they've had a ton of injuries. They actually started the season very good on defense. Uh, they've had two bad games in a row, but they had a bye week, came right at the right time. Cameron Wake was one of five or six guys who were all out of the lineup by the time of uh, their last game before the bye. They're all healthy now. This is the healthiest they've been. The last time Buffalo went to Miami, Miami beat them 24 to 10, and that was the Buffalo team that actually had a quarterback. This Buffalo team, I mean, are, are they Flynn. really are they really going to play Matt Flynn at quarterback? <laughs> yeah. Matt Flynn made Washington's defense, you know, gave them a heartbeat. Imagine what they could do to Miami. I mean, uh, even if they played Lewis, if Lewis is healthy and limping around and playing quarterback, I think it's a great matchup for Miami. Yeah, Matt Flynn uh, scares me a little bit though because he's not much of a risk taker. You know, he doesn't throw a ton of interceptions. He's kind of uh, Alex Smith to a lesser degree, not as talented, but same style where he's going to check down a lot. He's not going to force the, the ball into coverage. So I don't really like the defense at all, but if that's the worst pick that you made, which it probably is, then your lineup's pretty good. You have to rip on Alex Smith because I picked that, him once. Absolutely. Well, who do you have that you think is going to be so much better? The Chiefs. The Chiefs definitely are going to be better. The Chiefs are the most expensive defense that there is right now, and they'll probably remain that for the rest of the year. That's how good they are. They've scored a touchdown in all but one game. The Texans give up a t uh, pick six pretty much every game. Yes, they do. Who knows who's going to play quarterback there. doesn't really matter, to be honest. Uh, someone's going to turn the ball over to this defense that loves scoring. So, I think it's a great pick. Justified that they're the, the highest scoring defense. Uh, I wish I could afford them. Yeah, same here. I, I would have loved to have them in my lineup, but as you know, I spent early, so... Um, I think the Dolphins, their, their rush defense is what scares me a little bit, but I don't think it's a terrible pick. We'll see what happens. My pick this week is the Panthers. Their top three defense and total yards allowed. I think they were a little bit more reasonably priced for me. I would have loved to get the Chiefs, but I'll settle for the Panthers against a, a St. Louis offense that really doesn't put up many points. Well, besides last week. Let's ignore that game, shall we? <laughs> yeah, yeah that's the only thing that scares me. You mentioned it, is that where did St. Louis's offense come last week? I guess it came from Houston's defense. defense so yeah. um, I like Carolina. I've been high on Carolina all year. They're not. They're a kind of a no frills defense, though. They're not going to return an interception for a touchdown. They don't get a lot of sacks. But when all said and done, uh, they've given up ten points. So they must be pretty good. Uh, I think they're mediocre. I think they're middle of the road. I've said that all year. And the Rams have scored seventy-two points last two weeks. So I mean, that's scary. You know, you're not going to get those points, those bonus points from holding teams to a low score, and Bradford doesn't throw many picks. Again, another guy doesn't take a ton of chances. This so. is the week he's going to throw okay, a pick. Maybe. Right to my Panthers, huh? <laughs> all right, that's all the time we have today. That was the Fan Mouth Fantasy Roundtable. If this wasn't enough and you need some more analysis, you can check us out on the blog at blog.fanmouth.com. Like us on Facebook or jump into the conversation and send us your hard questions on Twitter at PlayFanMouth. We're going to be here all season long giving you our advice, so tune in again next week. Fanmouth.com. Play loud, play daily.